welcome back to the channel if you are here for the first time then you're most welcome and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet Dina Rodriguez was born in 1980 and she lived in Cape Town and from as far as I could tell she was the youngest in her family and she had two older brothers Dina lived with her parents and she worked at her family's business. It was a toy company, if I'm not mistaken, and she was studying a part-time BCom degree. In 2004, Dina's life changed dramatically when she met a man named Neil Wilson. Neil was a primary school teacher and they met at a nightclub. They started dating immediately after they met and Dina was in love with Neil. Some may say she was obsessed with him, but she thought that Neil was the love of her life. She completely fell head over heels in love with him. Her parents were very protected over her. She led a very sheltered life. So she lied about the relationship. She didn't tell them about the relationship. She even went on holiday with Neil and she told her parents that she was going on holiday with someone else. Neil Wilson was a primary school teacher and before he had started dating Dina, he was in a brief two-month relationship with a woman named Natasha Norton. After Neil and Natasha broke up, Neil got into a relationship with Dina. A couple of weeks or like two months into Dina and Neil's relationship natasha actually found out she was pregnant and she believed that the father of her child was neil but neil and his family doubted the paternity of the pregnancy and apparently neil's mother actually told natasha that they didn't want anything to do with her or the baby and if she wanted money they would have to deal with their lawyers so anyway, Natasha carried on with the pregnancy and on the 30th of November 2004, she gave birth to baby Jordan Lee Norton. After Natasha gave birth, Neil and his family were still denying the paternity of the baby. So it took Natasha, apparently also, it took Natasha about two weeks to get into contact with Neil to try and convince him to come to a clinic to do a DNA test. After two weeks, Neil finally agreed and also apparently at the DNA testing site, that was the first and only time that Neil actually met baby Jordan, the first time he actually touched baby Jordan. And at the DNA clinic, Natasha actually went with an album. She was very excited that her baby was finally going to meet her father. But when she came back home, she came back with the album unopened. It showed that Neil was uninterested in knowing baby Jordan Lee. But the DNA test came back positive and Neil was the father. And then a maintenance dispute started between Natasha and Neil Wilson. Neil offered to pay for maintenance, but the money that he was offering was very little. It wasn't enough to maintain baby Jordan. It wasn't even enough to buy her nappies so they were going back and forth on how much money they Neil should pay for baby Jordan and when all of this is happening the pregnancy the DNA testing the maintenance dispute Dina had no idea about baby Jordan and finally Neil finally got the courage to tell Dina about the baby that he had had a baby with Natasha and Dina was devastated she felt as though baby Jordan had come into their lives and just tore her perfect relationship apart and Neil actually told Dina that he wanted them to work out a situation where they could involve baby Jordan into their lives and Dina became obsessed with getting rid of baby Jordan. Dina then devised a plan to get rid of baby Jordan and her first part of the plan she went to a taxi a nearby taxi rank and she asked for anyone who could speak English and this led her to being introduced to a taxi driver called Sipo Mfazwe. She asked Sipo if he knew any anyone who would was willing to commit a robbery and this robbery would actually involve killing a baby and she offered Sipo 10,000 rands. So Sipo was a taxi driver and he claims that he only made 500 rand a month and he had to support two kids and his partner so he was lured it was very enticing 10,000 rand was very enticing to him. So Sipo then recruited another man called 
Mongezi Popochane and Mongezi worked at uh, as a barber shop assistant and he was also supporting his child and he was barely making any money at the barber shop so he was also enticed by the 10,000 rand. Sipo also recruited two more people, 18 year old Zanotemba Gwanda and 16 year old Bonyinko Sisikenu. After Sipo recruited the man, Adina had a plan that the man will go to Baby Jordan's house and pretend like it was a robbery gone wrong. So the man convinced the house about two times just so they can see the routine of the family. Baby Jordan lived with her mother, Natasha Norton, Natasha's brother, Dylan Norton, their parents and baby Jordan had a nanny called Tobega. The robbery murder gone wrong was supposed to occur on the 15th of June 2005 and baby Jordan was only six months old at the time. As I told you guys before, Dina worked at her family business. It was a toy company, I think. And so she had access to packages and something called a way bill. A way bill is that document that you sign after you receive a package so she organized a package and a way bill for the men to seem credible when they arrived at the norton's house so the previous night on the 14th of june she actually called the norton house and told them that the next day they'll be receiving a package and so that the men wouldn't seem suspicious when they arrived at the house on the 15th of June 2005, Natasha woke up and she kissed baby Jordan goodbye and she left for work. Baby Jordan was left with her nanny Tobega and Natasha's brother Dylan, he was 18 at the time. On the 15th of June 2005, around 10 a.m., the four men arrived at the Norton house. Dylan was actually expecting them. So Dylan signed for the package and as soon as he signed for the package the men took out knives and they made their way inside the house they tied dylan and tobega together and then put them in the room and they, one of the men uh Bonyinkosi, took baby jordan into another room Bonyinkosi was told to get rid of baby jordan but he couldn't do it that's when monyezi came into the room he was carrying a knife and he said he would deal with it so after he dealt with it he the men took a safe some keys and some clothes to make it look like a robbery to cover that it was actually a murder but the men left behind expensive cell phones dvds and i think they left behind some money so they the men left and after they left uh dylan was able to free himself and he immediately went to look for baby jordan and when he arrived in his room he saw baby jordan under a pillow and when he removed the pillow baby jordan had been stabbed in the neck and they quickly went outside to look for help but when they finally got help baby jordan had sadly passed away meanwhile the four men contact dina and told dina that it's done and they want payment the four men agreed to meet dina at the taxi rank and dina meets them at the taxi rank and she actually pays them five thousand rands and she tells them that she'll pay them the five thousand rands later on and after this the first thing that dina does is she calls neil she's excited she tells neil Jordan is dead, I took care of it, and it only cost me 10,000 rands. And obviously Neil is shook about what he just heard. And interestingly, it takes Neil four days after finding out that his baby is dead and receiving that call from Dina that she took care of it. It takes Neil four days to actually go to the police to report what Dina had told him. And this obviously led to Dina being arrested and the four men also being arrested. The four men were never paid the other 5,000 rands. They were only paid 5,000 rands to kill baby Jordan. The four men were found with the clothes and the safe that they had stolen from the Norton house. And crucially, Dina's fingerprints were found on that way bill that she had given the men and also the package and three of the four men actually gave confessions so only Dina and Monyezi who actually killed baby Jordan didn't give confessions. In 2007 Dina Rodriguez was sentenced to life for masterminding the death of baby Jordan. Sipon Fazwe and Monyezi Popojani were sentenced to life sentences and the other two men were sentenced to 20 years.
In 2012, Dina completed her degree in education in prison and she's currently a teacher in prison and at her graduation ceremony she actually met someone who was also graduating from another prison and they became dating and this man is a man called Rian van der Meeve and Rian is also serving a life sentence for murdering two girls so yeah it's a very interesting relationship apparently she's very in love with him and interestingly Dina's former cellmate was Nadja Dirk who is a very famous murderess she's famous for killing her husband who was a musician Talib Peterson. Dina seems to be thriving in prison. She is serving a life sentence and her parole and her appeals were denied so I doubt that she'll ever come out. She deserves to be in prison. Natasha Norton gave birth to another baby girl, a baby girl called the Kira and they call her their little Hila and she has brought joy to the family and she still lives in that house that baby Jordan was killed but the house went through some dramatic renovations because they say it didn't feel like home anymore so the house looks completely different and I couldn't find anything on Neil Wilson, he completely disappeared but hopefully he's okay wherever he is finally the most interesting thing i found in, while researching this case is a book called in cold blood the murder of baby jordan it was written i think by baby jordan's aunt and in the book they make some allegations that the reason why baby jordan was killed was due to that maintenance dispute and that neil was actually involved somehow involved in the murder of baby jordan but you know Dina was so in love with Nile that she covered Nile's part in the murder. So that's the end of this week's case. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to subscribe. And thank you to everyone who subscribed in the last month. I know I've been away, I've been busy, but thank you so much for everyone who subscribed and 